Welcome to Indigenous Coffee Talks, a place for live conversations with interesting people from all over the world. And what they have in common is their passion for Jesus and a great story about sharing the good news in the digital space. In each episode of Coffee Talks, we introduce you to someone who is passionate about using the digital footprint to help bring the gospel to where it needs to go. Through these conversations, we want you to catch a story, grab an idea, and go do something. Welcome again to Coffee Talks. In today's episode, we are joined by the cool folks of ASEAN to Unite, a network of disciple makers, influencers, and impact makers who are thirsty for revival in Southeast Asia and beyond. Hey guys, so this group of friends are based in Indonesia and praise God for the internet because we recently caught up with them. And since they're based there, um, we got to be able to see how it was during the COVID pandemic and the, how the need to share the gospel online and offline spurred this group of friends to start something through digital and spur others to do the same too. So they will share more about how they're doing it and how they were able to see God raise up pioneers in this generation. So let's have our guests for this episode, Mario and Danny. Hello, guys. Welcome to Indigenous Coffee Talk. Hey, Joe. Hey, Simon. Good to see you all. So love the energy. We're so glad to have you both here with us. <laughs> hey, feeling <it's> beautiful. <laughs> well, where are you guys calling in from? Tell us where you're from. Okay, we are. We're from Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, he lives one and a half hour apart from me. Mm-hmm. And I live I live in the western part of Jakarta. Been oh, there since okay. born. Jakarta is a big city, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, the traffic is awesome. It's awesome. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm from the Philippines too, so you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, understand boy. how it does feels. <laughs> great, great so, point. so um, tell us about you guys and how and what do you do in SAN Unite? So let's uh, have our listeners know more about about ASEAN Unite. Well, I'm the disciple making guy, and for the last eight years, um, God gave the heart for uh, disciple making because I came to Christ uh, around 12 years ago when I was in Melbourne as a student, and I was immediately uh, be made as a disciple and be pushed towards disciple making. Um, I have a family, uh, Yanita, my wife, and Kara Joy, my daughter, three years old right now. Um, my wife's actually, uh, she's my inspiration, she's my hero. <laughs> she's the one who actually spurred me on in disciple making and um, right now in Asia and Unite, um, together like a, like a family, uh, we want to see young generations and um, not as an object of ministry, but subject of ministry. They're the ones who can spur on, initiate things, pioneer things. That's how it started. But also, more story to come, inspired by my wife, actually. But more to that, Danny first. Okay, first of all, I'm not his wife. You have to get that clear. (laughs) My name is Danny, and I... I, I have been serving in a, as a full-time worship and discipleship pastor since 2009, I guess. And then I got a chance to have a further study. I took a doctorate degree in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So I stayed there for quite some time uh, to study about preaching. So that's my major. Um, I, I'm a doctorate in preaching. And when I was there, I... I went to churches, you know, so these old people say, hey, this is the biggest church, the most growing church in, 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 in Miami area. I went there. It wasn't the biggest church. Not, not, not so big anymore. I went to Fort Lauderdale. People say, hey, look at this building. It used to be the most hyped church in the area. And old people were there. Where are all the young people? Yeah, we were the biggest church. We were the most hyped church in the past. But now, not so much. So I, I, uh, I went back to Indonesia 
and we joined my church. My church is located in a mall facility in, in the center of Jakarta and surrounded with campuses around us. So I, I, I joined this first in the first place because I want to reach young people, especially those in the most hectic area in Jakarta. That's why our church is located in a mall facility. This is kind of new. In 2010, yeah, not so many churches do that at the time. Um, but then it grows, it grows. So I have a responsibility from the worship department and the discipleship department until the mission department. And in 2020, I have a, what do you say? I found an urge to serve wider, not only to serve my country, but even in a bigger area in Southeast Asia. Why? Basically because Indonesia itself has all the resource that we need to grow church. You name it, all the theological studies, all the experience with the government, all the um, diversity issue, everything. We have all the um, resources. We got Christian Salagram, Instagram celebrity, which is a Christian influencer with, yeah, hundreds of thousands of followers in Indonesia. So, but our surrounding countries may, ha may reflect different situation in terms of Christianity. And Mario came to me and opened my eyes, my eyes about the condition of um, our surrounding countries. And, 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 and the first time he said, Danny, do you know what happened in Thailand during the pandemic? Revival took place. And I say, really? And he showed me the picture and everything, the, the baptism on the sea. And I saw a 13-year-old, a 40-year-old girls and boys are being baptized. And I was like, wow. And Mario said, Mario said, this is one of the very rare revival taking place in Thailand. I said, Wow, I want to see that because in Indonesia, we have at least three great revivals in 1920s, 1950s, and 1980s. And here we are today. But other countries may, um, we, we can share more resources to other churches and countries, especially to the ministry startups. So those who are from the grassroots, but who have the heart and calling to start their own ministry. So that's where we are today i i think just hearing you guys i i can sense the the passion kind of bubbling over right and and it's very clear you you've articulated the burden for cities but actually it's a burden to see more churches uh, kind of being planted or being birthed in so many different arenas so you know i think one of the things that stood out when we were catching up prior to this recording you told us you know that ASEAN Unite is like a ministry incubator right can you say a little bit more about that and as well as explain to our listeners what does ASEAN Unite do or what what are its goals its hopes to accomplish and this whole idea of a ministry incubator I think that's really fascinating we want to learn more uh, to pioneer something is a really hard thing <laughs> um, well not everyone is being geared towards a pioneering spirit but um, by God's grace, and we see in the early church, we see everywhere where movements happening, where revival is happening, new ministries are growing, uh, being sprouted up in all areas of life. And also uh, new churches, new fellowships, uh, be it in the house setting, home setting, or in a more urban setting. Um, and all the challenges, uh, especially the younger generation, uh, they would need a safe community to not just to survive but to thrive and we long to see that for um, the younger uh, generation of pioneers who are uh, creative who are creating things uh, you know out of the compulsion that God gave them we to have a safe space for them um, and not just to share things but share resources and also uh, go for uh, fall forward together and it's 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 like a, a collaborative network so we build we spread a network of uh, pioneers or, or ministry start uppers um both the the church planners um the community start uppers or any different kind of creative ministry we want to know them and share resource one to another 
And Asian Unite itself is a platform that will supply the training and equipping they need. Not because we have all the resources, but we know where to find it. Yeah, you know, we are we are the, the black market. <laughs> we have everything you need. <laughs> you, you need this kind of thing. They kind of all right. I know someone who who can do that for you. So we we, we give them the safe place, the environment, but also the things that they're gonna need. So we impart the discipleship DNA, and um, we give them mentors, and um, we provide them with someone who can assess their ministry roadmap. So sometime when you are starting up, um, you don't really know what will be your um, unique selling point. You don't, you don't know what your future ministry will look like. So we have someone who can help them assess their behavior and their organizational behavior and try to draw an imaginary roadmap toward the future of their ministry to help them achieve um, the shorter, shorter goals. And then we, we provide with mentors like for, for quite some time, like for the first six months, this mentor, the next quarter, the next uh, different mentor and so on. And um, beyond that, we will give them a ministerial hub. Like if they are a small ministry, we're gonna connect them with a bigger ministry um, to serve in the similar field of collaborative network, the similar ministry after the second um, mentorship. And so that when they launch, they won't be alone. There's a, there's a father or the mother ministry bigger to help them out. Meanwhile, we also act as a brothers and sister keeper. So we try to befriend them. And yeah, we make this a place of rest, just like our values, rested, restedness. That is the one thing that is so rare nowadays. To have a rested heart so yeah we have this value restedness so we gave them this this um, network collaborative network as a safe place and a place of rest and we give the kind of friendship that you can tell your kid hey yo kiddo if if something happens to mommy contact this aunt or i, or I can i can tell my daughter if anything happened to daddy you contact this uncle he'll take care of, of all the problem you know that Can I tell my closer. children that too? <laughs> my yeah. kids, I can contact <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Mario and Uncle Danny. He'll take care of all your needs. <laughs> yeah, I pay all the debts. <laughs> I just thought that this, this posture is so cool, right? Yeah, if you yeah. don't just like being um, mentors, but also those that are coming alongside and friendship. Uh, friendship in the kingdom is such a understated, uh, but... Uh, so key, invaluable in lasting in, in ministry or in any endeavor. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you guys coming alongside in that way. Yeah, yeah even the part where Danny mentioned about the restedness, uh, like serving from rested heart and the posture of just being able to have a family um, and also a space where other people um, other brothers and sisters who are working alongside you get to enjoy doing it as well with you. So I think that's a really you know good principle in terms of what we're doing for the kingdom. So yeah, I, re I really love that principle. Um, I know that, yeah, um, praise God for what you do, guys. And uh, also, you've mentioned um, the digital space has really been, you know, like during COVID, uh, even statistics um, mention that, that there is really an increase in terms of how people are spending time in the internet and um, even with, with ministries starting up in the digital space. So um, I'm just interested to know, like, do you have some examples of these start uppers, not necessarily with the digital space, but um, in different spaces that you find yourselves in? And what stories have you encountered that you know, really brought you some inspiration and affirmation from the Lord with Essay and Unite. Well, uh, to reconnect with what I said, share in the beginning, my wife is the inspiration for this. So, <laughs> 2021 pandemic, um, we didn't hit the Delta yet, but it didn't seem to stop. Um, so personally, and as a, as a married couple, we need, just need to go deeper. And as we pray together and pray deeper, anything else we no agenda just deeper with the lord and 
my wife is connected with uh, someone uh, from a Sundanese background. So that's a, an unreached frontier people group, actually. Um, and she somehow committed herself to Christ because of an online service. And then, uh, through mutual friendships, uh, we got into a cafe and then started sharing our journeys together. But she worked quite an intensive, she's a beautician, by the way. She's a beautician and uh, work with artists and everything. So it's quite intensive. Her work is quite intensive. So the only time that she would have is only through WhatsApp video calls. So throughout the year, um, my wife and her would do uh, discovery Bible studies and, and just one-on-one -on -one like that. And through that, uh, every week, week by week, of course, there are things that we do on site, but mostly online, mostly online. And my wife is very consistent in that until um, one day uh, she decided to not keep her faith, but also share it. But she shared it in a Zoom <laughs> through a channel, through a chat. She decided to connect with her friend through Zoom. And apparently she was reached out by a pastor praying over TikTok through, through TikTok and doing prayers. And her friend uh, came to know Christ because of that prayer through TikTok. And <laughs> so from uh, a discipleship through a WhatsApp video call connected to a friend who got to know Christ because of TikTok and get together again online. And by the end of the year, last year, um, my wife baptized um, the... Our friend <laughs> came over to her city. She lived in another city now. And she asked to be baptized. And my wife baptized her. And our friend came afterwards to be baptized. And, and we see that these two brave young ladies who now are walking with the Lord are not isolated <laughs> sisters or isolated stories. These are stories that I hear like happening. Like everywhere. <laughs> Ministry is talking with people coming to Christ because of, through these online needs. So my wife inspired me to pursue this further. Uh, and Denny also encouraged us. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. So did the ministry came through uh, Zoom with TikTok? Or how did that look like further on? We, we believe that nothing will replace on-site. <laughs> nothing will replace face-to-face. Um, but the online is, uh, is, what do you call it? It's like a highway right now. It used to be there's a silk road, right? There used to be a silk road. There used to be a Romans road that connects everything. I think internet is the new Romans road, the new silk road that connects everything. And uh, to be a meeting place and to, to, to even, we, my wife, encouraged me and I was encouraged to do a, a Facebook campaign. Never do that. Only pandemic forced me to do that. <laughs> but, um, but then we um, responded just a simple thing, a simple exercise. But then we had to respond to 900 response. Just both of us doing it overnight through our bed. <laughs> and, uh, replying to the chats and all those things. And we believe, okay. If, if this is how is God working, especially among the young generation, what should we do? How should we respond uh, to this opportunity? And we believe that uh, there are better pioneers who are doing this, and they are not us. They are the younger generation. <laughs> the 20-something are much, much better in doing these things. And uh, we are here to walk alongside with the equipment. And true enough, Danny has a friend who did just that and way, way better than, than what I did. And we simply said, hey, you really need to share your journey and your experience so that you catalyze and equip many others who are thinking and have been praying for the same thing to happen in their ministry. Yeah, yeah. Number one, uh, we learned that through the digital platforms, the possibilities are endless. Like It's so deep, there's so many people that you can't meet 
um, face to face, but they are there in a digital world. And number two, um, the digital connection bypasses all the barriers. We can become instant friends, like there's an instant connection by only this um, digital platform. If you're into the gaming world, if you're into Twitch or Discord, or even a, in, in, you belong to a game guild or anything, um, the relationship is real. They can even call you if your team is being attacked. And they have, they have this hierarchy, like they call you the general. Even though you're 80 years old, and your, opponent, and your friend is like 30 something, but if she is, the, older, the younger one is the general, we, we, we call her general. And this is, it's, it's, a, it's a discipleship. They got values, they got rules, and they impart the DNA of how they do things together as a team. Um, yes, yeah, speaking about games and, and, and the barrier. And also, um, number one is, um, what is that? <laughs> I forget what I said. The first one, oh, the possibilities are endless. Uh -huh. Number two, uh, we can bypass the um, barriers. Mm -hmm. And number three, there are numerous um, communities that you, you can find online, but not on site. We have communities for everything. Even I found a, um, a friends with benefit community, a swingers community. Anything that you cannot find on this physical world, it's there online. And there people become so vulnerable with themselves, they open them up about something that was um, seem to be, um, what is that, taboo. But there, in, a, in an online situation, they, they came as they are, with their avatar or, or everything. The communities are there and people are coming to that community. So, yeah, we have more opportunities. We have more possibilities of meeting new people and starting or joining new and different communities just to be, to bring the light, to be the torch, to show them that your failure, there's no failure too big that God can use, to show them that this is not the dead end of your life. That there's gonna be something greater than this, that to tell them that, hey, you're not alone. Even though you hit the rock bottom of your life, look at me. At least you have the guilt partner. Let's crush them together. <laughs> Something like that. Speaking of, speaking of the, the um, pioneers or like the people that you join with in terms of um, the, the community, what are the characteristics or like what stories have like sh stood out to you in terms of Oh yeah, I am inspired with the person who did this, and we encourage this person to move forward with the vision. Or um, what what encounters have you had that you saw that wow? In this new season, indeed, God has been raising up, you know, um, ministers or like what it, what I call the modern missionaries of today. Well, I want to share with my uh, about my brother Timmy. So, oh, I, I think Timmy, you're gonna Timmy. say about, something about your wife, no? <laughs> <laughs> Another person. Now. I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that. Yeah, tell us more about Timmy. Again to my wife. <laughs> okay. Later. So, Timmy is actually a Danny's good friend, um, but he introduced Timmy to me, and I remember talking to him. I was I was uh, in a car, and he had. Tried, hey, I, I really wanted to connect with you. And he told this story where uh, because of the pandemic, he just wanted to make a seminar, a workshop. But that one exercise workshop turned out to be uh, something else. And then he discovered that the younger people within the local church can really do TikTok and all those things. So he decided to empower them, make something. And once he made that space, um, Finally, I think this year, they, they made a group of um, dozens of group, discipleship groups, um, because of the gospel sharing that they did through TikTok and also right now through Instagram. And uh, they're continuously meeting uh, once in two weeks. Uh, and they empower the local, the younger generation are the one leading these groups um, among uh, seekers. And th this is just one local church. And 
he basically says something like this. Hey, we are not doing something different. One thing, we empower the younger generation within the church to actually create. When they start create, God does something with, with their five loaves and two fish. Second, we simply use the principle of love, loving God, loving one another, but extend it into the online. Um, we, he shared the story of using the Gojek and the Grab, uh, sending deliveries. <laughs> so uh, instead of giving gifts directly, he decided to uh, you know, equip the younger disciples. Hey, if you want to show love, then uh, like the stories of your friends, uh, message them and send them something through Grab or Gojek. <laughs> give deliveries even in different cities we can order them for them um, you, using that application and that's how you show your care uh, that's how you also you share your life and he said just extend it to the online and apparently the seekers find communities like real genuine communities even through online means um, and then the third thing he said now more than ever the younger generation find that the social media is becoming just also as a language and a culture in itself and they connect even deeper um, not just face to face but through these online means so uh, we need to empower them further uh, to be an actual pioneer and that's where the conversation got started okay your experience you need to share this to to other disciple makers uh, and to other church planters, they, <laughs> they need to see this and this being multiplied to other ministries. That's how it started, Jonah. Yeah, you know, this. I, I wish we could go on and on, but we as we are trying to wrap this up, but I, I think the thing that hits me most is you, you're, not, you're looking at empowering and releasing these pioneers in the digital space. Uh, they are committed to Christ, but you also journey with them or mm -hmm. journey together, and you want to see them making disciples wherever the Lord has placed them. And I just love some of these stories that you are, you know, using to illustrate. And we're just so excited with you, you know, that God has positioned you to come alongside these uh, very important pioneers that will spark so much more uh, cool stuff. I also love the aspect of like um, what what Mario said about just being able to extend what you do physically into the online space. And at the same time, the part where how both Danny and Mario also um, found the need for something and then saw where God was working and at the same time joined together and do something about it. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just amazed, right, like how... God is the one who's raising people up, but at the same time, he, He's the one who shows you first where He is uh, doing something, and then you get to join Him in doing that. So it's, like, it's kind of like a divine, you know, matchmaking or appointment, if you will. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, which, which, which just encourages me that um, when you have something you know, that sparks in your mind or like a burden or something that you see God working, like how Mario told Danny, right, about like, this is the revival happening in Thailand. And uh, that usually gives us, you know, opportunities to just ask God, wow, Lord, this is, is this a burden? Is this a joy? Is this something that we can work on? So, yeah, um, which leads us to like uh, ask or tell our, our listeners, right? Um, Danny, what is uh, one thing you'd like to leave our listeners with as you have all these experience with ASEAN Unite, as you see God work through your experience? All right, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, not all people are born a pioneer. Not all people are born to lead. Not all people are born to start something afresh. But if you are that person, you have this kind of um, discontent in your heart. You see around you, you see your church, you see your ministry, and somehow you are called to do something new in a fresh way, your own way, the God-led way, and you think, maybe I got to start something. But where, where should I start? I have nothing. You know, I only have these five loaves and two fishes. Uh, what should I do? And you, 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 you ask people, you, you don't really find friends about this. So you can feel free to contact both Indigenous or us, Asian Unite, and we can talk about that. And we have persons who can help you assess yourself, assess your calling, and find a suitable roadmap for your future ministry. 
Call us now in this number. No, just kidding. We don't have that number. Singunite.com. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, oh, Danny. <laughs> so you can visit them at aseanunite.com. That's A S E A N U N I T E dot com. All right. <laughs> so, everybody, if you grab an idea or did something, we'd love to hear your stories as well. And of course, our line is very much open for you. And you can check also our site that's ndgt.us forward slash coffee. Or email us at coffeetalks at indigitas.org. So we get excited about all the different ways you do missions, especially in this generation. And we want to join you right where you are. Right, Mario and Danny and Simon? Amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. And thanks again to our guests, uh, Mario and Danny. They insist class, yeah. that we don't call them pastors, but brothers. <laughs> so, yeah, brothers, Mario and Danny. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Stay Thank healthy. You so much. God bless. Bye bye. So you bye bye. Thanks for joining us. You can find more Coffee Talks wherever you get your podcasts. If you like this content, follow Indigitas on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. We'll see you there.